Wow. Only the OG fans will recognize where I am right now. Yes, indeed. Temporarily, I am back in the old space, although it is uh, much more bare than it used to look. But yeah, I don't know how long I'm going to be here, but uh, we're, we just, we just got to work with this for a little while. But uh, yeah, I know it has been a little while, and that's because I had to move once again. And I will have to move once again later on, but for now, here we are. Time for the DLC, the bonus episode of my Metallica Marathon. And today we will be taking a look at Sir Jason Newstead's EP and album. Yes, we have metal and heavy metal music, which... At the time, I was like, okay, really, dude? Like, that's the best you could come up with. But honestly, looking back, like, that is a perfect way to describe these two. It's just straight, good old, heavy metal music. Yeah, I, I remember when, like, he first dropped Soldier Head, the song. I was, like, with my friends, and it was like, by the way, did you know, like, Newstead has a new band? And it turns out, it was really goddamn good. And look, here, here's baby me getting this album 10 years ago. Aw, oh, ain't he cute? But yeah, then they got uh, the fourth member and they made the album. And these two are criminally underrated. Actually, funny story. I used to work at Walgreens many, many moons ago, like right when these albums came out. And I swear to God, I saw like this old lady or like, like this middle-aged woman come in with a Newstead shirt. But not like just Jason Newstead, like this specific band Newstead. I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. So at some point this year, these two will be celebrating their 10th anniversary. And I thought I need to talk about them. Really, when else am I ever going to talk about them? I can't rank a one album discography, one album EP discography. So we're just gonna go through all the songs. Yes, we have 13 songs, or yes, 13 songs. Um, there are two songs in the EP that did not make it to the actual album, but I'm gonna talk about them anyway. So with that out of the way, let's get right into heavy metal music. And last place is actually going to be the last song in the album, Future Reality. Yeah, really, this is another case where, unfortunately, I don't think the album ends super strong. Like, r the only part in this song I kind of dig is, like, the chorus rhythm riff. Um, but that's about it. I don't really, there's nothing really on this song that even stands out for me or that I remember ever. Never listened to it. Um, it's, it's pretty whatever. And next up, geez, is like three different words together. Kind evolution. I don't know how how else the fuck I can say this word. Kind evolution. Whatever. Kind kind evolution. And only the only part in this song I really like is the solo. The bridge is pretty decent. The ending riff I think is pretty solid, but that's about it. It has a really sick solo, but unfortunately. Also kind of like Future Reality, not super memorable and not super amazing. And next up is going to be Twisted Tale of the Comet. Yes, the last three tracks on this album are all in last place. Every time I listen to this album, I always stop right before this song because like this song is okay. Like the main riff is kind of neat. Like the, and like the fucking, I don't know how to describe this drum beat, but a lot of songs kind of do it. Like, Rush did it in Anthem. We got uh, Iron Maiden did it in Phantom of the Opera. The fucking, like, the two, like, the riding on the two snares and the fucking hot, like, the a ride symbol and everything. It's not a super great beat, uh, but it kind of fits with this riff in this song. And really, the only part of this song I really actually like is the very end when it's like, Take it, take it, take it away. You know. The way it ends is pretty solid, but everything else is pretty whatever. Okay, now moving on to the good songs. We have, next up is going to be Ampossible. And I this is a pretty solid song. Not super amazing, but it is at least a C. 
like the intro uh, riff and like the main riff. I don't know how else to describe it. It's like it's like kind of wavy, um, but it's a pretty fun riff and chorus and all the riffs in, in this song are all pretty solid. You know, from here on out, like every single song is just full of really good riffs and a lot of fun moments. And this one is kind of like the appetizer. And then everything after this gets like significantly better. The last three were like the D tier songs. This is a C. Moving on, we're into the B tiers. And going to the EP, we have Skyscraper up next. And this was always definitely my least favorite on the EP. Although that's not to say I never like didn't like it. It's just the other three songs just did it a lot better for me. This one's kind of like a much more jammy and much much more riffy and like the whole ending of the song definitely like jams it out a lot. But one really nice moment in this song is like when it builds up before the third verse or so. And like the snare and the toms come in and it stops and he's like, then it goes into the main riff again. Oh, such, such a sick moment right there. Yeah, not great, but pretty solid. And next up, uh, also on the EP is going to be God Snake. So yeah, not the most interesting song ever, but it's pretty solid. It's a nice slow down song with like all these triplet fills and the fucking, the drumming in this song is pretty damn good. Uh, it's like the halftime uh, song on the EP. And yeah, pretty solid stuff. But now th this is the end of the B tier. Now we're moving on into the A tier. This is where shit gets really damn good. Next, we're going to have Nocturnus. And this is a, a mood song. Like it was designed for a specific mood to be in to listen to this song. It's like this super creepy, slow, heavily sang song about lurkers underground. And it just, the main riff is nice and fat. The way the chorus breaks and builds up. It's just such a, a one of these songs. You just want to like headbang really slowly to it. Because yeah, Nocturnus, heavy ass song, more heavy ass metal, metal music really encapsulates this entire project and then we're going to have as the crow flies and this one has a super catchy chorus super chunky riff just like every other song before this one and really i think this song shines in the bridge like the whole ride pattern when it slows down and then it like builds up constantly to the very end of the song and i really love those like three notes like the becomes real all that shit and then like the, into the solo, such a good song, so, so many good riffs. I'm going to say this for every single goddamn song because I don't even know what else to say about them. And next up, we're going to have the intro, Heroic Dose. Just another solid ass song. You got the chunky riffs, you got the howling vocals, you got the fun lyrics. Whole intro as the uh, beginning of the album, really great way to kick it off and... Yeah, it's just solid F, basically. All right, now we're in the S tier. These top four are all S tier songs and are all equally as good. But up next, we have Long Time Dead. And this is just a sick song that really never takes a break. Every single riff in it slays. It's very momentum driven. Another one that like it gets uh, like uh, stuck in your head like as the crow flies. Def probably the fastest song on this entire album. He has like double bass and live while you're living because you're a long time dead. It just gets you. It gets stuck in your head and it's very true actually. So yeah, good ass track. And up next, number three, we are going to have the first song that they ever put out, Soldier Head. And this one is. Same shit as always. Really solid. The riffs, the lyrics, everything in it just slaps. Super duper Motorhead vibes with this one. Uh, really like the main riff. It's a lot of chugging, but it's not palm muted. So it's just kind of like super loud. And another one that's like the double time song. And yeah, the lyrics especially too really 
stand out. I made the devil sell his soul, like all that shit. Really, really good stuff. And up next, which I think is super underrated actually, above all. And this one is kind of also like Nocturnus, where it's kind of a mood song. It has like a really cool vibe and it's super haunting. And the chorus is also, again, really catchy. Really like the lyrics in this song, especially in the bridge. Just the lead into the bridge where it's like he holds the note and it's like, you're freaking out, you're freaking out. And then the whole like seven million breathe all at once. Really like that part. It's it's a halftime song, but damn, is it a really good time song as well. But that of course leads us into number one. And uh, this is also from the EP. It is King of the Underdogs. Definitely my favorite song on this whole project. It just has it all, man. You got the clean intro, the, the way it builds into the verse, like the halftime verse and like the backups in the chorus. And then when it like speeds up in the bridge and then it slows down again to halftime, like past the chorus. Just, oh man, another one lyrically that gets stuck in my head. It's super catchy. It maybe goes on a bit too long. Like the outro, it's like the same thing over and over again for a lot of it. But yeah, I think this song just has it all. It has the half times, it has the double times, it has the lyrics, it has the vocal delivery, it has the riffs, it has a solo, everything. Everything in it kicks ass. And yeah, definitely my favorite song on here. So yeah, that'll do it for me today. And honestly, it's going to be a while again because... We got this Zelda game coming out tomorrow, and it's all I'm going to be doing for the next while. So, eventually I'll get back to it, but I'm going to need some time to really hammer this thing out. But yeah, and the next video will hopefully be my favorite songs of Metallica, and then we can finally move on to something else.